the audacious Dutchman. There you go. That's the intro. We're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, cool. We're in. Uh, and, uh, um, as usual, joined by... Well, not as usual, but more frequently than not. Joined by Monique. Uh, and Nicole Kaladny. Yeah, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you going? Good, how are you going? Yeah, doing really well. Yeah. Really, really well. You nervous? I'm nervous. You nervous? I'm a little bit nervous. That's cool. That's cool. It's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just breathe if you get a little too nervous. <laughs> um, if you see an emoji over my son's face or blurring whatever I decide, uh, it's because I don't want you internet creepers out there <laughs> looking into my son's eyes and getting ideas. So... <laughs> Fucking. Gee, that's why <laughs> we joke, but that's the real reason. Yeah. Have you, have you? Do you? Uh, back in the day on TikTok, I saw a video of so mums were putting their kids up on TikTok, and they literally were like, uh, no, now I can't really remember the video, but like basically they worked out that creepers were like literally saving the video. I don't know how they worked it out, but they like, worked out you could like use this app and work out who's saving the video and it was like creepy old dudes and they were like literally like toddlers wow. and I saw that and I was like when I have a kid I'm not putting my kid's yeah. head on the internet and now I have a kid and an internet show so I'm <laughs> not putting my kid's, kid's head but on the internet. Apparently what they'll do as well is they'll get like even if you don't show anything like they'll mm. still photoshop your kid's face onto something. Say that again. Like, they'll Photoshop your kid's face onto, like, a naked body or something. How do they get my kid's face? But not not ours, because it's not on, but, like, yours they can do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they can do that. If I don't like understand. A, if like, like how, a, how do they get my kid's face, though? Not your face. If you not my kid's face. If you post something, I'm saying, if you post your kid's face. And they like yeah. your kid. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I get you. Kid, yeah, yeah. If you put your kid's face on the internet, they then Photoshop that onto... This is a great way to start a podcast. We're going to get some fucking viewers out of this, aren't we? Jeez. But like it's legit. Like that's yeah, a, like a that's something the, worth. The that's title, noteworthy. The title, pedophiles. I know, right? <laughs> Step one, pedophiles. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put that on the pedophiles. thumbnail. <laughs> How to make sure your kid's not creeped on. <laughs> no. Um, no, I reckon. Uh, let's start it off uh, <clears throat> in the right spirit. Uh, let's start it off oh, with a. Sorry. Uh, this is not going well. For you. <laughs> a little clip, I reckon. Oh, sorry. Oh, I doinked him on the head. Here we go. Can you guys see that? <clears throat> yeah? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Laying down the bare carpet and putting the finishing touches on the candelier, this isn't your ordinary wedding. I think you'd say that the decorations are, are, are wonderful. In February, the distillery held a Valentine's Day competition for an all-expenses-paid ceremony. There were some fantastic <laughs> but, uh, throughout the whole uh, process. Brooke and Jake uh, stood head and shoulders above the rest. The couple from regional Victoria won, but with a catch. Whatever you propose? We'll say I do. Bundy Rum fans picked the finer details on social media and local businesses were chosen oh, to help wow. pull it all together. All Guests roared with laughter when the bride and groom's outfits were finally revealed. The other option was a yellow, yellow outfit for us, um, which would have been fun, but we're glad that they've picked the white. <laughs> Jake says his family has always loved Bundy Rum, so it seemed a fitting tribute. He looks we'll like a polar bear. bear. <laughs> and we will. We will. <laughs> the couple will now honeymoon on Gari, and for any others looking wow. to tie the knot in a similar fashion... So that's something that we're going to have to think about, so watch this space. Hataya Gripsky... They did it well though. They got all wow, the details. I don't know. <laughs> oh, the end of the clip just ate shit, but that's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> I, appreciate, I appreciated the puns. Well, yes. was I that Channel good. Seven? They're fucking bad for that. Aren't they? They're terrible what for that. Bad? What do you think? Iconic. So if I said to you, Honey Bunch, we won a uh, contest <laughs> to have a Bundy rub wedding. I would say let's do some charity and let's gift it to somebody else. No, surely not. That would have been outstanding. To have a Bundy rum wedding. No? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm lacking the words. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. No, I, th I thought it was really good. Um, I also like their name. I can't remember what their names were. I was just fixing up the camera. What were their names? They were really good Aussie names. Like Karen and... 
Ryoni or something like that. They were good <laughs> names. Ryoni. I can't remember their names now. But uh, I was struck I was struck by the names. I was struck by the fact that the dude looked like polar, the polar bear. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah. And then he very casually said, well, we would have had rum at the wedding anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was good. I've got I've got no problem with uh, with a rum themed wedding, um, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's just me. Yeah, I think definitely. So. Yeah. <laughs> you seem I wouldn't do it. Wouldn't you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't have a rum themed wedding. Why? What? Like, don't drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very true. Very very true. Can you uh, trade it in for something? You know. Can, can you trade, trade it in? Can I trade in the rum? For what like... a wedding's worth of rum? <laughs> yeah. Like twenty five thousand dollars worth of yeah. bundy. <laughs> Would you like that in cans or bottles? No, no, what I'm saying is like, they're giving away this wedding and the rum, right? Can I just have $30,000? Yeah, the answer's no, because they want it for the brand, obviously. Yeah. Bundy Rum aren't just like having a competition to give away money. I don't know. They want their brand out there, which I get it. Like, it's a good idea. It's a I really think it's going to do really well, to be honest. I'd go to that wedding. <laughs> You'd go to that wedding. Maybe if you got fun. that invite and you like... Maybe I'd even have a Bundy Rum. Maybe you have yeah. to. I don't, think you to I don't see them <laughs> serving anything other than Bundy rums. Yeah. No? Well, it'd have to be like rum themed cocktails. Yeah. Well, the old cane cutters cordial. What's that? That's what people call Bundy rum. Oh. Because okay. it's from Queensland and they're yeah, all cane right. cutters up there. So they call it cane cutters cordial. Um, no, I yeah. No? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you reckon? No, I nearly said his name. What do you reckon, mate? You reckon big man? (laughs) Big sir. Uh, Maybe that could be his internet name too. Big sir. Yeah, Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And then that's his internet name now. Big sir. I like it. Is that bottle done? No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I don't mind. Oh, fucking, he's got a couple of things to say. It's not done. Bitch, it ain't done. It ain't done at all. Um, we was that theme? We didn't have a theme for our wedding, did we? We got married at my folks' place, though. We didn't have a theme, no. We got married on a farm. We did have That's a theme. Not too like, far it wasn't off an Italian theme by any means, but we had Italian food. We had Italian cocktails. Did we have Italian food? Yeah, we had pizza. That's not really Italian food, is well, it? Well, there was pizza, <laughs> and then there was, like, Italian aperitif. So I don't like, know what that word means. There was, like, like, canapes. I think that was, I don't know. Yeah, right, okay. And then we had Aperol spritzes and Negronis for the signature cocktails. Didn't we have little burgers? No. We had little <clears> meatballs. <throat> You sure there were no burgers? Arugini. No, there were no little burgers. Was I even at my wedding? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, I your know, body I was. was. I, was <laughs> I was nervous. You had too many of mum's Negronis. Oh, fuck. Remember Farnell? <laughs> yeah. That was so good. So my mum makes these Negronis. It's a gin, a gin cocktail. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to have one shot of gin in it. Campari and vermouth, I want to say. Yeah. My, my mother makes them with two shots of gin, no, Campari and vermouth. So anybody who has a Negroni is yeah. of mum's Negronis is basically on the floor. Like if you're not a seasoned drinker. Yeah. This man, my best friend's dad, who I've known my entire life, I've never seen him get drunk in my entire yeah. life. His his daughter says he's like half a half a glass of wine. Yeah, kind yeah. Of man. yeah, yeah. He had four four Negronis, <laughs> and he was supposed to play the guitar and sing at my wedding. Yeah, he could. not he, he did it. Oh, he, he did, did it remarkably yeah. well. He had eight shots of gin yeah. and then played guitar. And smashed yeah. it still. Yeah. yeah, he did really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My dad sung at least. Yes. So. Yeah, Aww. no. Was he supposed to sing? Yeah, he was. Yeah, probably couldn't remember the words. <laughs> <laughs> or his name. <laughs> or feel his face. But it was, um, it was, it was pretty funny. And he yeah. came up to me and he was like, I'm so drunk. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> I won't remember your wedding day. Yeah. <laughs> he had a good time. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but mum's Negronis are they're potent. They're notable. They've uh, they've they've taken me to wonderful places on many occasions. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got uh, I've got another clip, and I was considering keeping it for later, but I almost want to get the clips out of the way and then uh, and get stuck in. So so this one's a good one. I like this. At uh, it's it's. Well, I, I think it's it's really good marriage advice. Ooh. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just... I'm already keen. This is the title. <laughs> yeah. How can you expect a man to be faithful to you for, you know, 30, 40 years when you are giving him no sex or doling out sex very reluctantly? It's the eternal stereotype. Men always want sex. Women rarely do. Incredibly, Bettina Arndt's solution is straight out of the dark ages. 
It doesn't matter whether they're in the mood to keep their men happy. Women like Amanda and Donna should just do it. <laughs> I've heard this theory before. We have a right to say no to sex, as we indeed we do, of course. Um, but what many women don't realise is you don't necessarily like, need to feel like having sex in order to enjoy it. Don't you think it's a really insulting message, not no, just yeah. to women but also mm -hmm. to men? Well, it's, it, it applies to men too. I mean, I see but men, but men who insulting? are rejected. Isn't it insulting to, to the man to say, look, I don't feel like having sex with you, but I'm going to do it, I'm going to fake it? No, it's nothing to do with faking it. It is, of course it, it's no, faking it. No, no, it's not faking it. It's, it's faking an interest, of course it no, is. No, it's not faking an interest. It's, it's saying I have no interest at the moment, but I know once we start, I will enjoy it. I I'm might enjoy it. it. Well, I might enjoy it. And if I don't start getting aroused, if I don't get into this, I'll just give you pleasure. OK, so you're having sex without <laughs> desire. <laughs> Your partner, one would assume, would know it. And doesn't that build resentment in both? There's nothing wrong with a charity bonk here or there. Did you hear that last bit? There's nothing <laughs> wrong with a charity <laughs> bonk here or there. <laughs> so, so I actually watch, I watch this Christian YouTuber and she, um, how many kids does she have? She has like five kids or she's got four kids and she's pregnant with her yeah. kid. I think they're Mennonite, I want to say. Yeah. Or something like that. There's some like very, um, quite strict denomination, very conservative. And she put out a video saying like how to improve your marriage or like how to be a great wife or something. And I was listening to her, I was, like, I was like, I'm curious, how do I be a better wife? You know, I want to be a better wife. This video, she's like, when your husband wants it, you give it to him any time of the day, whatever. When he wants it, he gets it. Uh, who's that basketballer? Uh, Jordan's mate. What's his name? Uh, I can't remember now. But he dragged his wife on tour and they would have sex four times a day. Oh, you did every day. I can't remember who it was now. I don't know. Um, he was in The Last Dance as well. Scotty Pippen? Scotty Pippen. Yeah. yeah, Dead Set dragged his wife on tour. Yeah. Wow. yeah. She Just never sex. left his side. Wow. Four times a day, anytime he wanted it. Wow. Um, now, the reason I brought that video up is I thought it was hysterical that that advice was coming from a woman that looked like that. <laughs> she looks like a librarian, no? Oh and God, she's just yes. like, yeah, no, nah, if he wants yeah, it, yeah. If, he, if he wants it, you nothing better be DTF. And if you're not, there's nothing wrong with the charity bond. <laughs> charity. I thought that was hysterical. I'm definitely going to be using the term charity, charity bond. Yeah. I love charity bond. How good is that? Oh. I thought that was wonderful. Um, no, that's great. <laughs> Uh, that's it. That's all the videos I have. So let's jump into uh, why we have Nicole here. So Nicole is a a dowler, a dowler, <laughs> a, like a jeweler, a jeweler, a jeweler. <laughs> What's a jeweler? Yeah. Nicole's a jeweler, and um, uh, she helped us through uh, Big Sur's delivery. Mm. Uh, and up to and <clears throat> yeah, uh, and she was great. Uh, we really. Uh, having her on board changed the process for us and I mm. thought considering my audience all seven of you now up from <laughs> four to seven <laughs> fucking let's go we're going for ten where's that other three um, no considering our audience I thought it'd be good um, knowing that a couple of you are young couples maybe married and are considering having kids it'd be great to sit down with someone um, in that position and have a chat so um, what is a doula? There is a saying, so I want to read it from my friend. Yeah, I want go to get for it, it right. please, please, absolutely, um, please. But my friend, I gave her a quick buzz in the car and I was like, what would you describe a doula? Because there's so many ways yeah. to describe it. There's a typical, you know, we emotionally support, we physically support, but this one, it was good. <clears throat> so it's by Pam England mm. and it's, quote, Asking your husband to be your sole guide through labour is like asking him to lead the way on a climb of Mount Everest. He may be smart and trustworthy, you may love him, but in the Himalayas, you'd both be a lot better off with a Sherpa. Mm, and I just think, great. yeah, I just, I loved it. And I was like, that is exactly what a yeah. doula is. It's someone that can guide you yeah. through it. Like we've been there. We've been through the hospital system multiple times. We've been through home births multiple times. We know the road. We know what the train's going to look like. We know what to pick up on if it's going to be getting bad or good or whatever it is. We know kind of how to lead, and I guess as a partner, you can learn so much. <laughs> yeah, I feel like as yeah. well, like just having your your partner assumes that your partner knows. Do you want me to take my headphones off? You take your headphones off. <laughs> <laughs> 
sorry. I'm watching that cable just like travel. You're gonna have to get a cable extender. Anyway, um, you're saying me? It assumes that they, unless I mean, unless they actually have yeah. done it before. But in our case, for example, you'd never, I'd never give birth. You'd never yeah. assisted a woman give birth. Yeah. So why not find somebody who knows what they're doing who can guide you through it? Why make? Why not take that stress away? Absolutely. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Um, we were nervous. We were we were nervous about the. So we did our research, and our research sort of showed that the hospital system can fail you and a little our bit. Prior yeah. experience, our like immediate experience in the Queensland hospital system was atrocious. That was <laughs> really bad. That was yeah, grim. Yeah, it felt like trying to dig a hole with it a spoon. It felt like a cow <laughs> giving birth to a cow. <laughs> it was very agricultural, wasn't it? But yeah. uh, it's Queensland's very agricultural. It is. The whole state. It's lovely there. We lived there for six months. It was awesome. Um, part of me wishes we were still there, to be honest. Mm, Hi, Mum. Um, <laughs> uh, but it is very, yeah, it is very, it is yeah. very agricultural. Yeah. Um, so from my perspective, the reason that I thought a doula was a good idea is, yeah, we weren't happy with what we feared the hospital system mm. would be like. Especially where we were. <clears throat> through the Gold Coast, yeah. it would have been a very different story. And it is scary to go through um, the process of uh, that. That Like, if you've never done that before, and to be honest with you, even if um, some massive accident happened and you got pregnant again, yeah. um, <laughs> we're, not, we're, we're having one child. It's like socialist China around here. Like, <laughs> One I child policy, for family. sure. <laughs> Our opinion is kids are like Nazis. Having one of them... Having having one around is yeah. kind of funny and a little bit charming, yeah? It's like the racist uncle. Two of them together, though, those little fuckers are going to get ideas. Don't be insulted. It's human. No, I've already apologised for my rant about two children before in episode one when I oh, yes. berated a client. Um, that was and harsh. That was ruined harsh. her and I was like, day. <laughs> I literally, so the next time I went back, yeah. I apologised to her. Yeah. I was like, I'm so sorry. And she's like, oh, you're fine. Don't worry. Like, that was water off a duck's back. I'm like, fuck me. <laughs> I would have fired rough. me yeah, immediately. <laughs> just like that. Yeah. But, uh, um, no, so from our perspective, I sort of looked at it like an insurance policy. Um, it, it just added a, a, a layer of comfort, a little bit of a security blanket. If we had any questions, we had mm. someone on our team and I think anytime you do anything important in life this is the way I do it anyway um, you can do it however you desire uh, I like to build a team around myself whether that's buying a house uh, getting married and and planning a wedding or having a kid I like to pick experts that can help me to to, to get there because I don't know anything yeah. So I need to have Google and someone as a sounding board. And yeah. that's how we looked at you. We looked at yeah. you like a sounding board. And it was an awesome experience. Mm, yeah. Um, and it was amazing getting to know you yeah, guys yeah, both. Yeah. And being yeah. on the same... I guess yeah. we had a lot of similar things. Yeah. Like mm. Very similar values and morals, which obviously helps. Mm. And it's obviously something I'm more passionate about mm. with those physiological births. <laughs> and with, with such a vulnerable experience... Yeah. Sorry, I'm being a snake while I speak. <laughs> with such a vulnerable experience, you, you want that, though. You wouldn't want someone who's yeah. like... That's why it resonated with you, even yeah. like whatever profile I found. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't want someone like super fruity and like, yeah. like wishy washy who's like, imagine your vagina is a flower or something. Yeah, like, you know, like <laughs> unfolding, like, yeah, leaf by leaf. Blooming. I didn't want it, yeah. yeah. I wanted yeah. just like real, yeah. you know, so. It what it is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You mentioned physiological birth. Yeah. What does physiological birth mean? It's I feel like a lot of people out there will just yeah. assume I'm gonna that, hope that I quote right. you, you have... What was that? I'm going to hope I quote this right. Yeah, no, yeah. You're, you're a bit, but like a lot of people yeah. will assume that like you are birth. pregnant and you yeah. go to the hospital and the child comes out and you take the child home. Yeah, yeah. That was my understanding of it yeah. before we started yeah. investigating. So, so, so what's a physiological birth? So people say like you can have a vaginal birth, yeah, and that's just a baby coming out of your vagina that can be anything. You could have had vacuum, you could have had forceps, you could have had anything. What's a vacuum? Any intervention. They mm. pop a vacuum suction onto your baby's head and pull the baby out. On their head. On their head, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And again, sometimes I'm sure it's needed, but a lot of the time it's not. Usually it's to do with an epidural. And, yeah, and forceps are obviously market. just tongs, basically. Huge. Yeah, huge tongs. Huge tongs. Tong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But no, so physiological mm. is just, yeah, where it's, it's undisturbed. You go into spontaneous labour, you have the baby 
just vaginally, I guess, mm. without anything, without any medications or anything. <clears throat> Imagine, like, yeah. the Middle Ages, I suppose. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm, no, I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. Who knows? Und- what kind undisturbed, of undisturbed, and raw, yeah. kind of just, yeah, mm. nothing intervening in that. Like, yeah. the mother just doing it with the support of yeah. whoever's yeah. around. And, yeah. Mom, why, why did that appeal to you? Uh, it's weird looking back. I'm like I don't I don't actually know why. I think it's just that I, will, I like I'm as a person I'm very much like not like let's just avoid the Western medical system as much as possible. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's my key. <clears> like, <throat> and I like women have been giving birth forever. Why? Yeah, okay. yeah. Why do we need? Yeah. Tom- like, why do we need? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do we need yeah. something pulling my baby out? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I'm all for like I'm designed yeah. to do it that way. Yeah. yeah. I'm all for these things happen, like, I get really rare scenarios, really rare, but mm-hmm. if you look at our statistics, it's, it's, they're blown out way, mm-hmm. way past the, the need of them. Yeah. yeah. Was, I feel like at one point they were implemented for, um, emergency scenarios. Yeah. And then doctors were like, well, this is convenient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this makes us more money because we can yeah, get the yeah. birth done quicker. Yeah. So let's just, like, make it not And that's what it's always been, like, yeah. Let's just make this part of the process yeah. Yeah. to yeah. avoid yeah. having whatever scenario they think would happen yeah. if you just let a woman do her thing. Yeah, and like I say, I attend hospital births, I attend free births and home births, and some of these births, the spontaneous ones, they go for four days before someone mm-hmm. has a baby, and that's not uncommon in that type of when you leave birth to be physiological. Mm-hmm. It can be long, it can be, you know, drawn out, it has stalls, mm-hmm. it has pickups, you know. But also it also can be average. Yeah. Like mine was an average. Uh, very average, yeah, very straightforward. Doesn't mean that it's going to be some, like, big yeah. abnormal yeah. thing. Yeah. But what is that normal? Nothing's normal. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like, everyone's so different. Yeah. But yeah, at the hospital, they're just like, let's try and make yeah. it quicker. Like, once you're in, you kind of have to keep going, I guess, once you're in there. Yeah. Unless, yeah, you take yourself out. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a hard situation. To... <laughs> it's very interesting. So, Mon and I had had a conversation before we, before Mon was even pregnant about trauma. So, yeah. um, we're big believers in the Gabor Mate theory of trauma i was trying to pull up i was trying to pull up a clip i might actually i might actually still try and pull up the clip oh breaking news we have internet in the shed so i don't have to save the clips anymore if something pops up i can google it and we can watch it as we go live right now i'm not prepared for this gabor mate video um but uh go Gabor mate is a uh he's uh eastern bloc he's uh from budapest and uh, he uh, is a big believer in uh, uh, childhood trauma causing uh, uh, onset later issues mm. in life. Like patterns in your brain. Yeah. yeah. So letting a kid uh, cry itself to sleep, he feels, yes. manifests itself as depression or anxiety at yeah. um, 31 years old. You know mm. what I mean? <laughs> so we were really keen on the idea of limiting traumatic experiences, um, whether they seem great or minor in early childhood. So something like ripping their fucking head out of a vagina with forceps or Mm. the old bloody Makita vacuum cleaner (laughs) just seemed like something that would potentially harm him later in life. Um, Next week's guest, you should actually mention this because he um, does a lot of work with, like, he can go back to stuff in the womb that affects your brain development and how you function, like, as a, as an adult. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, or, like, an event that happens. It can be so small as well, like, yeah. um, like your heart rate might have dropped for a couple of minutes. <laughs> so at some, po- at some point, Monique's going to jump off camera and feed him and put him to bed. Um, you might come back out, you might not. We'll see what happens. No, so yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go for it. it. Yeah, okay, cool. Not a problem. Um, and when you're ready, just come back with the monitor. Yeah, sure. Actually, let's take a break. Let's just take a, like a, a couple of seconds. I think it doesn't take long because you already have that bottle. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah so, so Mon's, uh, Mon's jumped out to feed the kid, put him to bed. Um, we're actually going to check out this Gabor Mate video on trauma. We won't watch the whole thing. Oh, I have heard of him. I've watched it. Yeah, yeah. We won't watch the whole thing, but he has a very interesting video at the start. And this is what we were trying to avoid uh, when we, when we had, had the kid. When I was a year old, my mother actually gave me to a total stranger in the street to save my life because she didn't know if she'd be alive the next day. So I didn't see her for a month. Deep sense of abandonment, not being wanted. Now, I don't recall that. I can't recall being handed to a stranger in the streets of Budapest because there's nothing to recall with. The brain's organ in the brain, the hippocampus that encodes recall memory is not developed then yet. It doesn't develop till later. 
but the emotional implicit memory of abandonment is deep in me. So that's interesting. It's deep. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, crazy. So we were really yeah. keen on trying to limit as much <clears throat> of that sort of stuff as possible. Yeah. Um, and having you in the birthing suite was actually really good because yeah. we were able to navigate tricky situations as, as they came up. Um, little things like Mon had decided to have a water birth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when we got there, the bath was not available. Um, and I feel like you actually really helped navigate that situation because yeah. personally, I was really stressed. I tried not to show Monique that I was stressed, but I was like, fuck, this is like off script. And this even during the work, though, like I said, you did a lot of the work. You came to all the appointments. You, you listened to Mon chat to you. You, know, and you did your yep. research beforehand. And it's still, when you get put on the spot and you haven't dealt with something Absolutely. or that you hadn't thought about that that's something that could arise. Yeah. Then you are, you kind of like, oh shit, what do I do? Mm, mm. <laughs> but it's something I guess I'd thought about or I'd heard about or I've supported with. And I was yeah. like, nah, it's okay. Let's yeah. kind of, <laughs> let's try to weasel our way in and ask some better questions. <laughs> Absolutely. Have you ever had like a, and if you haven't, that's okay. Yeah. Have you had a really good situation where um, you've been able to help? Oh, hey, thank you. <laughs> If you recall from last week, we have some camera issues with this camera. Um, thank you. Well picked up. Well picked up. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, a couple of seconds is okay, or like a minute is okay, but there's 11 minutes of just me and like Josh, and I'm like doing like because I'm like, well, it's not on me. He's talking, and I'm like looking ugly as fuck. Anyway, thank you for that. Um, but uh, have, yeah, have you got a, like a? Have you ever seen a situation where the natural progression of something would have gone very textbook medical in the hospital system, and you sort of help? Not really. That yeah, no, no, multiple yeah. times. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lots Tell of me. even just yeah. little. Oh my golly, where do I start? Yeah. Um, she might watch this. So <laughs> just yeah. be careful of what I say. I had a client, uh, first time mum. We went in at hospital. Um, she was nine centimeters. So she had her first check when she got to hospital, yeah. and she was already like making pushy sounds. Yeah, you can take this off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then what happened? Um, her pushing stage was a bit longer, so it was her sister's. It was just kind of like, yeah. you know, pelvis structure. So what do pushing sounds sound like? How do they differ? <laughs> so Mon, Mon yeah. was in early labour and yeah. she's like, ah, is that a pushing sound? No. no. So there's a, I'll That's demonstrate, I'll happily yeah. demonstrate. Yeah. 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 yeah, please. I always say, I mean, some people don't make sounds, some people do, but nah, like the birthing sounds, I always say when your cervix is opening, it's a really like, it's a higher pitch. It's like, ah, oh, I don't know, it's a, okay. it sounds yep. really, yeah. Yeah. edit that out. <laughs> no, you're all good, don't stress, don't stress. Um, yeah. But it's like a higher, it kind of, I don't know, it changes, and then okay. when it's pushing, it's like a really grunty, it's like a, I don't know. Like a mooing sound? Yeah, it can be, I okay. was really mooey, like I was yeah, like, oh, okay. yeah, I don't okay. know, sound. Yeah. And then, but yeah, you can feel, it's like. That's very interesting. It's a different pressure, it's a different, yeah, okay. I like the pushing stage. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you can hear it, you can hear the yeah. shift. I right. like to take recordings. It's almost like you change gears. It's, yeah, it is. Yeah, wow. And you can really notice the difference. Yeah, okay. Did you notice it in Mon? I remember, because I was half asleep which makes me sound like a prick but i knew for a fact that <laughs> yeah. we were going to be in that hospital for a long time and i was like me getting half an hour to 45 minutes yeah. just a bit of shut eye means that my um prefrontal cortex will be able to make better decisions yeah and i wanted you sleep. to have one i was like no nah, there's yeah. a bit of time still yeah. that's <laughs> another thing yeah. like you told me you need to go sleep yeah. now and i gave you permission i was like nah, uh-huh, uh-huh. you've got a bit more and time it's yeah, okay it's really handy having yeah. someone who's a pro <laughs> um help you out with that sort of stuff but yeah you, you were talking about a situation yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, so the pushing stage was too, like, longer than the average, let's yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the hospital, they called in a doctor that came in the room. Um, they called in the obstetrician to come in the room because it was out of their range of normal. Anyways, this mum, with the help of me and her partner, we were like, no, keep going, you're doing amazing. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. Baby's fine, heart rate's all good. You just keep going. There's nothing wrong. And thank God the partner's on my side. And he was like, no, nope, okay, cool. Baby's high, I can hear baby's heart rate. Cool, good. Yeah. Um, when they were checking with the Doppler. Um, and What's yeah. the Doppler? Doppler's just a... Heart rate monitor? It's just a heart rate monitor. Yeah, just okay. like an on and off kind of one. Okay, yeah. Instead of a CTG or... What's a CTG? It's one that wraps around your belly. Yeah, okay. Or yep. some are wireless, some are not. There's yeah, okay. another one. It's yep. a little scalp clip. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. that's right. I remember initially <laughs> we were talking yeah. about the scalp clip. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> how, how does that work? It's legit, they put it on like some big so screw rod wire thing and it just screw, yeah, sc- just. It so they the like go up the birth canal. Goes up the birth canal and they legit, you can physically see them tightening it. I've only seen, I think, one person have that and it was mm-hmm. pretty. So yeah. it might just be our like 
fruity mentality yeah. but like going back to that sort of early childhood yeah. trauma thing and you go like oh it hasn't been born yet well, yeah it's, it's gonna store like it's still yeah. it's still a kid you yeah know? even in the birth canal and like, so even with that scalp thing like so many babies are known to get distressed and then you're in an emergency situation yeah. because the screw has caused a baby to get distressed and yeah. then you're wheeled off well yeah. yeah so you were the first person to tell me yeah. about that <laughs> it's crazy and uh, nobody told me about that. Yeah, and the hospital won't say that. They're like, it's, just, it's just a little clip. It's just a little clip Correct. that goes on baby's head. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little clip. So, <laughs> you, yeah, and, like, it's it's almost like the entire hospital system is, like, geared in a way that, like, you can't make the right decision. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're, they're very withholding. That was just our experience. Yeah. Um, you sort of... I always felt like every appointment we went to, we would crash around. Like, we'd yeah. just, like, bump over here and then we'd bump <laughs> over there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there was never a... a like, I, there was nothing even so much as an on the first visit. Yeah. Here's the roadmap to pregnancy. That's really easy to get yeah. the government to come up with a medical professional and a graphic designer to come up with... Yeah fucking bit of paper don't even have to print it out yeah. send it to me the roadmap to pregnancy yeah. just say like you're gonna have this many scans you're gonna do this at this point you're gonna do this yeah. this 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 on the day you'll have to do this um this is the thompson method yeah. for breastfeeding yeah. check that out like yeah. there's nothing it's just like it's like driving around in the dark yeah you don't <laughs> yeah. have your headlights on yeah. and you, or like you know when you like you know when you wake up to pee at night yeah. and you like need to go to the bathroom <laughs> and you're like <laughs> Like, I'm not, not going to turn... I don't want to turn the lights on <laughs> yeah. because I don't want to wake up. Yeah, yeah. So you, like, sort of Fumbling feel around. around. <laughs> that's literally how it felt. Yeah. And that's part of the reason we got to do all that is because yeah. I was like, it feels like someone switched the lights on. Oh. You know what I mean? I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Such, yeah. Um, yeah. I had a friend that said that, though. She said, you know, at a hospital, first time mum, she's like, they teach you nothing. She's like, I've legit learned nothing. Nothing, yeah. about, nothing about, like, the stages of labour. Nothing about anything. Yeah. It's just, mm-hmm. you're thrown in there. She's mm-hmm. like, my gosh, what would I do? Like, what would I yeah. do without the information coming in? Yeah, yep. and which then, is yeah. scary. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. scary, especially like I feel for like first time mums or first time families, and I'm like, mm. it's not fair. It's not mm. fair that you just kind of thrown in there, and then people walk out. Like I think it's one in three women have birth trauma now. Yeah, yeah. And like, I mean, that's just the women. What about the babies? And then that mother going on trying yep. to trying to mother. Yeah. With all that trauma, mm. like no wonder, like all these rates of depression and everything's so high. And, yeah. Well, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Like postpartum depression yeah. in mothers because it's it's a weird experience. Yeah. It's definitely the weirdest thing you've ever done to date, and then it's weird afterwards. And it, yeah. to be honest with you, it's it's weird afterwards already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like. Why do we need to add to the weirdness? Yeah. 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 Um, Why make it harder? No, Why, yeah, 100%. it's already going to be a hard thing with the lack of sleep and a newborn baby and a new yeah. mum. Mm-hmm. Don't need to add that it extra almost layer. Feel, <laughs> it almost feels like the hospital system is geared towards the rich men in Richmond. Yeah, yeah love We were that. talking about this earlier. Yeah. Is it Stone? Oliver Stone, is that his name? Oliver... Anthony. Oliver Anthony, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Oliver Anthony. Yeah. Um, obviously, like, the, the dude who's just become incredibly famous yeah. off the back of his song he's had uh i want to say is it 37 million listens on spotify now yeah very quickly he's kicked up a lot of controversy yeah. that song's really cool the yeah. rich man like the, the story about the rich man in richmond yeah. um we were listening to it before we started taping um and that song's about um making rich people rich and um you just work hard yeah. um and that's almost how the hospital system feels it feels like a machine that's not really... I always got the sense that it wasn't to make mums feel empowered and special yeah, yeah. and to make them feel like they could succeed. Yeah, yeah. It felt... It felt like a money-making machine. Yeah. I mean, and I have yeah. a background... I have a background in in the corporate world. Um, I used to be a real estate agent. And it felt like that. You know what I mean? It feels like that sort of process. And I know that sort of process is there because people want to make money that's how it feels yeah. it doesn't feel like a special experience no and it's cold it feels cold i guess i think yeah. it's like the energy it feels cold it's not it is a business at the end of the day uh-huh. pharmaceuticals provide things yeah. to a hospital and they've yeah. got to sell it pretty much and the more times they can use something the more times they can give you something yeah. benefits them it doesn't benefit the family i mean it does again i'm not saying hospitals don't save lives they do and yeah but again, a lot of it's unnecessary. A lot of it does build on that trauma for babies yeah, and mums. Absolutely, <clears throat> and not to not to discourage people from going into into hospitals. No, no way. Yeah, hospitals are definitely great, but they're built to a point. Yeah, I feel like they're built to cater for the masses. Yeah, they're built to 
save the most amount of lives possible yeah. and do the most yeah. amount of good possible. Yeah. And the philosophy of that means that sometimes things get missed. And that's why it's a yeah. good idea to get a third party in to really look after you yeah. and advocate for you. Yeah, and we know both worlds, I guess. We know what you're wanting, especially if you're wanting that physiological, natural kind of birth. Yep. We, we know that side and we also know what they're going to kind of offer. And so yep. we kind of sit there going, okay, what can you play with? What can't you play with? When's it more serious? And when is it just being said? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. To sell. Yep. <laughs> or like just being said to, yeah, make things quicker, whatever it is. Yeah. We're here to filter it. And then, yeah, yeah you guys, I mean, it takes a bit of the load off the partner because, again, yeah. you guys will be doing a lot of hands-on work or mm-hmm. emotional work in that space. You don't have to be doing advocacy as well. Mm. And, yeah, protecting that space. That's, I guess, what a doula will help with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were talking a little bit earlier and you yeah. mentioned um, that you don't necessarily have to do any any studying no. to be a doula, which no. is interesting. You decided to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what was your... Do you want to talk us through a little bit about your path to be like yeah, where you yeah. are now? Yep. So what, So I had my first baby um, just before I was 24, um, and I had a beautiful... So I think I watched one um, one birth video, like a home birth video, maybe a free birth video, not sure. Um, What's free birth? Free birth is just no one medical is present. Okay, not um, even a midwife? No, no. So, so it's just, just a you mom. and hubby? Yeah. It's just doula or not? Do- yeah, okay, sometimes yeah. doulas, sometimes no doulas. Depends on yep. the family. Um, and it's just them taking responsibility over their work, uh, okay. their birth. Yep. And, yeah, what was the word? Um, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, no, you're all good. You're all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, free birth. Yeah. Free birth. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's using your intuition, I think. That's the main thing. It's, it's not looking externally. So a midwife, even at a home birth is an external reassurance or something. Yeah. So it's it's just kind of going, no, I'm going to tune into my body. I'm tuning yep. into my baby. Yep. I've got the trust of my partner that trusts me to tune into my body. That's cool. It's, yeah. it's awesome. And it's I love the births. I think they're really mm. powerful. And mm-hmm. But you've got to be the right type of, you know, family mm. or woman I've to got, do that. I've got a yeah. good question Go for, for it. How much do you... How much of birth do you think, from a woman's perspective, yep. perspective is, like, psychological... You know what I'm saying? Huge, yeah, yeah. 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 How much it affect like their whole Yeah. Like if you're having oh. a crap experience. Yeah. Or if you're having a good experience. Yeah. Head, yeah. How much so, of it do you think? Yeah. yeah. It's in, I think it's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. and it changes you for life because again it's that whole like we're here to give birth, I guess. Not that's all we're here to do, but yeah. it's one of the things that our body is kind of made to do. And when we can't do it or something tells us we can't do it or something's intervened and then we've had a cesarean, mm. it makes you feel like you failed. Yeah. And then so many women hold that for so long and that heaviness. And yeah, I mean, that was one of the reasons well that I did a home birth was because my sister had a cesarean. So you've done one, have you? Sorry? Home you've birth. done a home birth? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Both, All of them? Both mine were home births. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so you've got two it. kids? Two kids. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So yeah. the first one taught me um, that, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I remember it felt right. I didn't yeah. even want to contact a hospital. Seven weeks I had called someone and was like, yeah, love that. That sounds like exactly what I wanted. Had a midwife? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and yeah, she was amazing. Things kind of went a bit wobbly at some point yep. in our journey, and we had um, another midwife take over. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's big stories there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she um, was okay. We spoke about it earlier. We're not yeah. really sure what we can discuss, so we sort of have to like tread lightly. But yeah. she was great. She there was, was great. Just... There was a suspension somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. along the yeah. pathway, which yeah. I'm sure some people yeah. might know. We'll just say the word APRA. <laughs> yeah, just APRA. Being dodge. Nah, APRA's the word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. no, so yeah, I ended up with a midwife that I absolutely loved and said that, yeah. Yeah, won't say too much. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, and she was good. And what was her role? What was her role in the process? So her role was purely just kind of to check baby's heart rate if I wanted baby to be yep. like if I needed any internal exams, if anything was wrong with baby. I think they had you know the air. They did everything medical wise. If that makes sense. The air. The air. Resuscitate, like oh, giving, okay. bring, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I cool. don't know what the word is for that. Yeah, no, you're all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and then, yeah, so, yeah, my son led me to that. So I had a really positive birth. I remember the biggest high of my life. Like, I remember there's photos of me just smiling ear to ear, you know what mm. I mean? Like, just in this bubble of That's pure great. joy. After the hardness, I'm not going to say it's not, um, yeah. not hard because it is, it's it's bad, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's painful. It's, you know, it's the most intense thing that people, like, will experience. A lot of mm-hmm. women are like, that blew me beyond what I thought it was going to be. But it was actually magical for But you. it was magical. But, no, but it was still really hard. It was just breaking through that that layer and then you kind of mm. get you hold your baby in your arms and that oxytocin and all those natural hormones flood your body so and you feel a bit of pride i did feel a bit yeah. of pride i yeah. definitely i was like i did it i remember i just yeah. i just honestly felt like to me it was magic i remember mm. just saying to my partner i want to do that part again just the How pushing part the bath 
I can't remember. Probably a long time. Like a while. A while and you just yeah. hung out and you just. just oh, I actually enjoyed. no, sorry, I wasn't actually in the bath for long. Okay. Um, no, after I mean after, well, after you after you birthed a kid. A little while. Maybe yeah. Okay. Like, maybe so half an hour, so the the baby's long. born. Yeah. And then you're hanging out in the bath. Just hanging out. Yeah. You, you were there for like. Five minutes, half an hour. I, I can't remember. Two I'm hours. gonna say half an hour. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was yeah. a while. Yeah. And you were just bonding and just soaking just bonding. it in, just taking and a moment. just being me. And like him. after a big workout, you catch your breath. Yeah, yeah, and just yeah, yeah. yeah, and just absorbing that. And no one was touching him. No one was rubbing him. No one was doing good. I was doing it all. You know what I mean? Yeah, like cool. I was, you know, making sure it was all pace. good. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, yeah. everyone was in our little. You know, I was in my little bubble of that pool safety. That's awesome. And yeah, kept yeah. our zone. Mm. By contrast, yeah. we had our kid in the hospital, yeah. and we were told get out of the bath. Yeah, like to come in the bath. Yeah, yeah, you, you come in the bath. You got to get out now. Yeah, and you have to hobble back to that yeah. room, like yeah, yeah, just yeah. after you freshly had a baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the water is quite soothing. Yes, isn't it? Yeah. So by birthing yeah. the placenta, so yeah. for some people who might not know, I forget that. Like I feel like a lot of the people who yeah. watch this probably like they've well, done no. zero research. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you birth a kid and then you birth the placenta, yeah. which like is the birth isn't over. What, what is the placenta? Out. Is that food? Is that like the baby's food? <laughs> the ba- yeah, it's yeah, yeah okay. it's what filters yeah. out all the good and the bad. Okay, yeah, yeah and yeah. delivers it to baby. So that thing grows. Each each pregnancy yeah. has a new placenta, yeah. and mums okay. grow it, and it comes out with the baby because it's yeah, no cool. longer needed. Yeah takes a couple hours sometimes, mm-hmm. and yeah, again. So yeah, the the water was really soothing for Mon. And yeah, I loved else. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's nowhere near as potent as an epidural can be, obviously. No. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Depends on the woman. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Depends on the mm-hmm. woman. Yeah. But then she's forced to get out of the bath, and yeah. then she's raw dogging it. Yeah. Yeah. So she's yeah. gonna birth the placenta, which. Yeah. Um. There's no shoulders, obviously. There's no bone structure. Yeah. But, it's a bit I more mean, gooey. It's not it fun. It's it still crampy. Sound, I mean, like, <laughs> I'd probably phone a friend. <laughs> um, yeah, I... Yeah, so that was hard to watch, and yeah. I just felt like... Well, once an area is already sensitive, you can't imagine pushing something yeah. else out of that yeah. area that's mm. just been uh-huh. bruised whole... and sore. <laughs> yeah, I wish yeah. one was here to talk about it. Um, yeah. But from my Edit perspective... Back in. I know, right? <laughs> Edit her Ghost you. mom. <laughs> From my perspective, the whole day was great. Yeah. And the only thing... Because... So we started off at home. Mon went into labour at 5.30 in the morning. Yep. Um, which you'd be like, oh, that was a long labour because she birthed 1.30 the next day. And you're like, holy crap, that's am, 21 yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah. That's a long time. But the reality is you're not yeah. in agonised. So nobody no. ever told me this. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. always assumed like 24-hour yeah. labour, holy crap, you were you're like pain. writhing yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. She was... Like fine, yeah. I, I not was fine. not gonna say fine, but I will say fine. She, <laughs> she was, looked fine in the video. She was <laughs> managing incredibly yeah, well to the point in which definitely. she said to me, "If this is as bad as it gets, women are pussies." <laughs> That's what she said to me. Mine. Um, at six o'clock. Yeah, yeah. She said that, or maybe a little bit earlier, like four o'clock in the afternoon. She's like, "This is yep. manageable." Yep. Um, it, it's yeah. Yeah. It, it may have been as bad as stubbing a toe. Like, yeah, you know, you yeah, sometimes yeah, like, yeah. fuck, that really hurts. Yeah, yeah, but it's okay. But you're not like, I'm writhing But it's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, uh, yeah, and it only got bad yeah. when we interacted with the hospital. <laughs> as soon as we interacted with it. Like, yeah. the going in, I call them and I'm like, fill up the bath. I'm like, no bath. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. Like, there was someone in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we get there, and literally the first question, they're like, have you got your folder? So I was parking the car, Mon walked herself in, yeah. and they're like, have you got your folder? Yeah. And it's like, that's a stupid question to ask. <laughs> like, yeah. a mum who's writhing out, no, I don't have my fucking folder. Can yeah. you, like, get this thing happening? Yeah, get me in and, a room. <laughs> it's like they're deliberately obtuse on purpose. Yeah. Obviously, they're not. So, ob- like like I said earlier, they're built to cater for the mass. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's my opinion anyway. Yeah, yeah. But, like, the reality is they're, like, they're, the care's not there. The care, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a, someone's first time experience, yep. yours and Mon's first time experience. Yep. Having your child, like, that's a big moment in someone's day. You just, you think there'd be a bit more compassion, a little bit more warmth. <laughs> for sure. Yep. Absolutely. And then one of the things that struck me is you feel like it's over. Yeah. And it's not. <laughs> like, you ha- like... The kid comes out and the kid's on mum's chest. And then we were, like, I think I mentioned earlier, we were immediately told, did I say this? We're immediately told to get out of the Yeah, pretty, yeah pretty five much. Minutes, right. yeah, five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. Yeah, Something yeah. like that. Um, yeah, yeah. It's pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, because they were worried about her ribs all being blood or something. I they said remember. something. They I got think they some just reason. don't, they don't like, they're not trained, I don't think, overly okay. yeah. with placentas in water. They decided that she was out of the bath. 
So she got out of the bath. Yeah. Um, and then she's in a bed, and that was grim. <laughs> All of that was like real grim because it was like a quite a nice experience, and then we went back, and it was just like it was grim. <laughs> like it was just not yeah. as like we were in the, when we were in the bath. Candles. There was candles, there was music, and it was, like, very soothing. And then we're, like, in this room with a white light. Yeah, yeah. White light. And then, like, she had to birth a placenta. Yeah. And, like, with no drugs. And that yeah. really hurt for her. That was hard for me to watch. As, like, yeah. a husband. Yeah. It's hard to it's watch hard to your watch, husband. Yeah. Your husband. <laughs> Mine. Mine's not a man. Um, <laughs> in pain. Um, it's hard to watch your husband. Uh, you're, <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> Hard to watch your missus in pain. Yeah. Uh, and then when you think it's over and then it's not, it's like when you like, you know, when you overeat and you're like, I can't eat anymore. And then you have another bite and you're like, that was a mistake. And I felt so like I worse. just kept yeah. eating. You know what I mean? And I wasn't even the one in pain. Yeah, was yeah. The one in but, pain. yeah, yeah. But you really feel for them. I think yeah. As a partner. And then she burns the placenta and like, thank God it's over. Yeah. And then they come over and they're like, we got to do some stitches now. And you're like, there's me. more and then at the stitches i was like standing next to her and i got to the point i was like oh, i just gotta step out for 60 seconds because i nearly yeah. vomited i was like i was done it was a lot it's a lot it to process lot. but it, yeah. yeah yeah um but no it was it was awesome having you help yeah. um i suppose a good question that some people might yeah. have is what's the difference between, between a midwife yeah and a doula because they might sound very similar. Yeah, I think people do. That, get like they, they, they both yeah. help. Yeah, we're both there yeah, to we're, help. We're you both and support. support you. Yeah, and both yeah. have different roles and both are important depending on the person. But some people will get a private midwife and a doula. Yeah, both, which is mm-hmm. awesome. I think yeah, yeah. <laughs> if yeah. that's what someone's wanting. So yeah, what's what's the difference? So like, let's so a, a midwife in a hospital is very different to a midwife that's privately. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Attention? Yeah, like you, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, like someone because, who yeah. you like, they, they run their own business, they're subcontractors. Yeah, yeah. And they, will, they work for themselves rather yeah, than the hospital. Yeah, and what yeah. they're going to do, that person, if that person's coming to you in a space or you're, they're coming to you this way yep. at home, that you're going to have continuing care. That person's going to know your story, same yep. as a doula. We're going to know your whys, what, oh, you're, what you're wanting, yep. what you're, you know, what yep. you're everything. Where yep. a midwife in hospital isn't going to do that. They, yep. they, they're still going to be supporting you as much as they can. But again, they've got a lot of other women to support on that mm. night or that mm. day. Mm. Um, a doula. So they, yeah, so midwife, medical, they're medically trained. They've had years under sure. their belt of, yep. you know, vaginal exams and, yep. you know, everything else. So yep. a doula is not like that. We, uh, I guess we're not more basic. We just meet women in a different way. We hold different space for a woman. We more do like the physical yeah, cool. stuff, helping guide yeah. the partner, mm-hmm. um, emotional support. And we do like a lot of the teaching beforehand. We like not the teaching, but I guess like the education or informed decisions or what might come up in a hospital setting, yeah. what might come up in a free birth, yeah. whatever it is. And we can kind of just teach you guys or like help cool. show you guys some of the pathway yeah. so that you're like, oh, okay, cool. If that arose, mm. I've got some strategies or I've got yeah. something in my toolkit or my partner knows a bit more. Yeah. So he's not in shock. On, yep. on the day and going, what? What is that? And again, we can't say everything, but we do try to do our best to yeah. <laughs> fill everyone in. Yeah. So you're almost like that roadmap that I yeah. said that I wish yeah. I'd had earlier. Yeah. 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 That Sherpa. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, that's cool. I yeah, like yeah. that. Um, and we've seen birth. I think that's a positive mm. thing. A lot of partners haven't seen birth or maybe they've seen, I don't know, someone go through a cesarean. I don't know. They haven't, they've not been exposed to it, I guess. Yeah. And we've seen multiple people give birth or, you know, we've heard multiple stories mm. and we can see what happens. We, we kind of identify the different sounds now. Yeah. You know, you can kind of know when to go to hospital, when not to go to hospital. That's very yeah. interesting. I remember <laughs> yeah. on the day I called you yeah, and yeah. I was like, because mom was like, I need to go to hospital. It might have been six o'clock. I think it was around six o'clock. Yeah. 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 Um, and I called you and I was like, yep, yeah, no, nah, we've got to go to hospital. Like, and I feel like you said to me... Just wait like, till I get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can like, you wait? Can yeah, you wait? and you kept like trying to like push it out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Because... And why was that? So the longer you can stay at home is like, let's say you, you're wanting a physiological birth. Let's say yeah. you don't want an epidural. If you want an epidural, you're going to want to get there a bit earlier. You don't want to get there just as you're pushing or and you miss yeah. that chance to get your epidural. Yeah. Um, but if you don't, you want to kind of stay home as long as possible to kind of get as far dilated and kind of just you kind of just want to get there have a baby wrap it up you know mm. do the whole thing where yeah so like staying home you're comfortable you feel safer at home you yep. can relax and keep doing you can get more comfortable like i know mon was doing all the right positions for her body she was a lot more comfortable yeah. at home and yeah. she was in her space and it sort yeah. of i suppose goes back to that point we made earlier about yeah. us the 
um, the psychology of like feeling yeah. good yeah, really yeah. helps you have a positive. Yeah, it birth. just keeps um, yeah. boosting up that oxytocin. Like I said, yeah. even for partners, I knew there was still a little bit of time just by the sound. Why is making... oxytocin important? It just it's just what drives labor. Okay, it's the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, it yeah. helps baby, helps mum. Yeah the body's flooded and everything mm. works. But if you're fear, so again, if you're scared of hospitals and you walk into a hospital setting, your body's going to tense up. They're going to yep. be bright lights. If someone's entering their fingers inside of you to do a vaginal exam, again, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> your body will clench. It'll kind of go into a more, um, yeah, it won't be flooded with oxytocin at that point. So learning and, the skills to yeah. help build oxytocin yeah. is going to obviously help your woman have that birth that she wants. <laughs> yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you yeah. have an epidural, yep. does it block the oxytocin? I don't actually no okay <laughs> I wish right. I did that. but I, you don't I remember get, you don't... there's something that yeah there's some hormone your body creates I feel like it could be to be honest because when... you go numb you like yeah you go into feeling all these things and be flooded by everything yeah please as, do as opposed to wildly speculating yeah. <laughs> um uh my thing what I, what I don't like about epidurals is like this I guess the spiritual side of it like you don't get that full on you don't get that euphoric high you don't i don't know maybe it is because but then again i do i do see some people go have a big high from that <laughs> how the hell do you spell the word oxytocin O X Y oxy i don't Oxy-tocin. know i don't know tocin there you go Let's find it yeah oxytocin yep yeah so it blocks the oxytocin, yep. which is the drug that forces... It forces, yeah. And yeah. then they have to put on the fake oxytocin, as it's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To keep it going because yep. you've run out of, like, well, it's stopped it. It's stalled mm-hmm. it. It's, it's, but you can see a woman, like, who's had an epidural to a woman that hasn't. That woman's riding it. It's flowing. All the hormones are playing when they're meant to be playing. It's triggered by where baby is as well and coming down. And then, yeah, mm-hmm. once you have it, it's just blocked. You're kind of just talking. Mm-hmm. You're eating. You're having mm-hmm. a sleep. And I'm like, eh. Yeah. They're just things you shouldn't be doing in you know labour. You know who didn't tell me that? What? The hospital. <laughs> yeah. I remember we yeah. actually had that conversation. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. had this discussion about yeah. the oxytocin. Yeah, yeah. And that's where we got it from. Yeah. Um, it's crazy that there's a drug that, yes, yeah. obviously birth is incredibly it's, painful. It's hard and it's out there so, for a reason. It's yeah. It's totally out there for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No shame if anyone's had it. And I'm not saying, it. like, yeah, definitely, but... It's it's crazy that it has become status quo, yeah, yeah. and it's not discussed. Yeah, and it's not like you need to make it. This, this is the thing. There's never a you need to make a decision about the way you want to have this birth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as to whether you want to try and raw dog it. Yeah, <laughs> right? like yeah, but I and think, here's yeah. the pros and cons. Or yeah. do you want to take an epidural? At which point we'll have to. Um, uh, Talk about the process, I guess, or like the, the pros and cons to mm-hmm. that. Yeah, you're not going to feel, feel pain. Like you but walk then in the and they say, okay, so here's the epi- epidural. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I think you've got to be really yeah. like to say, you, again, with hospital midwives, you want someone that works with pain. You don't want a midwife that, and you don't know who you're getting that night. No. Again, you can ask for different people, by the up, way. But... You can end up with Jilly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bad experience Fuck you, with Jilly. Jilly. <laughs> yeah. Um, But no, yeah, you don't know who you're going to get. You don't know who you're going to get. And if you want no. that raw dogging experience, mm. you want a woman that works with pain. And if you don't, then you've got a doula that kind of helps navigate that a bit more. Yeah. Um, so we watched a couple of documentaries, and some of them suggested... Now, I'm not... I want to put out a proviso that this is not medical advice, obviously. Like, I'm not a fucking (laughs) gardener slash amateur comedian here. Yeah. But we watched a a documentary that suggested that when you have the epidural and then the the flood of (laughs) oxytocin, your body can't actually handle it and your body doesn't have the (laughs) hormones required to actually go into labour. Yeah. Which usually means... Not usually means... Which often means that your body can't go into labour and they make you have a C-section. Yeah. Yeah, Well, it's... Well, I don't know if you imagine where they put an epidural. What is it? I actually don't know what it is. (laughs) I I always assume it was a pill. Is it a needle? It's a needle. It's like a needle with, like, medication that goes into your spine, I think it is, or something. Somewhere in that. That sounds fucking horrible. (laughs) Yeah, and again, it can fail. It can have its cons and everything. Do you know what happens if it fails? Does it just not... You either have have to redo it. Okay. Which is, again, another... So does the... Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, I haven't seen too many, so I'm not an expert with it. Um, Let me Google it. Yeah, go for it. I do you were saying pros and cons list that yeah. I've got for you guys somewhere yeah. in my folder. How to... Yeah, you were, like, you had... That was one of the things as yeah. well. Like, you had 
a million bits of paper. Yeah, like yeah. Like, you had everything. I just, just like, yeah. read this, read this, read yeah, this, read yeah, this, like, read And this, it's really this, short, this, and st- it's, like, summarised into, like, a sheet. Then you've got – everything's kind of covered, but in little sheets. And, yeah, easy for partners to read and easy for mums to get yeah, a hold of. Yeah. Administered. I feel like I'm about to read some horror movie. <laughs> a needle is used to insert a fine plastic tube called an epidural catheter into your back spine – Near the nerves that carry pain messages to your brain, the needle is then removed, leaving just the catheter in your spine. You may feel mild discomfort when the epidural needle is positioned and the catheter is inserted. That sounds... It's scary. Terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what it essentially does is your body can't... So let's say you're having four contractions in that 10 minutes. Your body can't do that. Once it's numbed, it yeah. kind of goes a bit floppy in between here and it slows down. So yeah. then you might have only one or two contractions every 10 minutes and then they have to add more. Yeah. And that's what they call, yeah, that cascade of intervention where <sighs> things just keep happening to you because you've agreed to one thing so mm, yeah mm. and then like i said yeah babies don't love it yeah it's yeah it's a whole process <laughs> madness. so i would say being informed having yeah. that information before you go into labor not on the day yeah because you your yeah your partner especially is not going to absorb enough she's gonna be like yeah just save me now whatever it is if yeah. she wants that um but if she knows beforehand what the pros and the cons are she can make that informed decision and so yeah. can you to support her better going hey that's actually not what we want like yeah. we want we want to avoid that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm all for mm. informed decision-making. <laughs> Absolutely. I think dudes have a big role to play in the yeah. birthing process as well. Sure. You might not think that you do. Um, obviously, you're only doing 10% of the work here, but I think your role <laughs> is to be a support person. Yeah. And if you're nervous about being a support person, I think getting a support person for you to be a support person. Yeah. Yeah. Is a very supportive idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But, um... But it is. You guys are amazing sure. at some things, but you're not going to... Ah, yeah. <laughs> I was just looking at that. Um, yeah. yeah, no, you guys are amazing at things. Like, you you have your own place Absolutely. in that thing, but yeah. you can't hold it all. Some people can. No. Some men are going to be able to do that all. But also, as a woman that's, you know, who's pregnant, you have to go, like, to ask your partner, does he feel comfortable being mm-hmm. able to advocate? Is he comfortable doing all the things? Because it's not just... The emotional support or the physical support. It is. It's advocating depending where you are or... Every partnership is going to be different. Yeah, every it's going to be really personalised. So you as a woman need to know what you want to do from the start or like not from the start. At some point in your pregnancy, you want to be yeah. like, I want that physiological birth or I want that mm-hmm. planned elective caesarean yeah. and whatever it looks like. You need to have those chats with your partner. What can he do in that time? What What is his role and how can he best support you? And if he can't do that... In the ways that you're needing, yeah, get someone in to help you. It's only going to be a positive experience for both of you. Absolutely. I decided yeah. I decided early on I needed to be a rock yeah. for mom specifically. <laughs> That's what I had in my head. And I was like, how do I be a rock? And I yeah. feel like it was sound decision making. Yeah. That's how I was going to be a rock. Yeah. And confidence in her. Yeah. Those two things. Uh, and I... <laughs> we, we watched a documentary, though, and... Um, this lady really wanted a home birth mm. and the husband was terrified of the idea of something going wrong and mm. him losing her. Yeah. Now, you might go, what a pussy. But, like, the yeah. reality is he loves her so much. Mm. He's, like, terrified of losing her. Yeah, yeah. And their arrangement was, if he can't handle it, he needs to leave. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying there is everyone has yeah. a different... Everyone has a different yeah. partnership, whether it's a marriage, whether it's you're not married. Everyone has a different arrangement... And I think it's a really good idea to sit down. I was going to say with a bottle of wine, but you're pregnant, so you can't. Um, it's a good idea to sit down and have a discussion about the arrangement that works really, really well for you. Yeah. And, um, yeah, work out what your role is as a dude. Work out, well, yeah. it's quite obvious what your role is as a, as a lady. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, be honest with your husband or yeah. partner and tell him, like, what you need. Yeah. Um, Maybe have some, I know it sounds a bit silly because you're pregnant, but have some empathy for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's okay if he yeah. can't do something that you're wanting him to do or you're expecting him to do. Yeah. Sometimes we you can't do it, you know, yeah. and it's about, yeah, what you're comfortable with. I think the sooner yeah. you have that conversation, the better. The yeah. better, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're nervous yeah. about having that conversation, maybe even have it with a doula, you know what I mean? Yeah, like. Yeah. That's what that's what yeah. part of what a doula is there for. And we're, we're there to support you. Like, as much as we're there to support a mum, yeah. if you're having a part where you're nervous or some of your own fears are coming up, mm. 
before the birth or in, during the birth, we're there to be like, hey, let's let's gather you out of the room so the woman doesn't hear us chatting. Absolutely. And just trying to reground you and go and explain to you because you might be like, oh, I'm scared she's going to bleed, you know, whatever it mm. is. And we can be like, hey, but we've got all this, yeah. you know, whatever it is to back, you know what I mean? Like yeah. just to keep, yeah. I know what you mean. I can't remember. I can't think of the word. Yeah. <laughs> keep um, you focused. 100%. <laughs> and keep you strong for that mum. Yeah. yeah. Strong for that mum instead of breaking and then just acting out of fear, I guess, is what a lot of men can do in the first yeah. case if they're not well prepared. Mm. So one of the things that you helped us work out was yeah. a birth plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, what a birth plan is, is for us it was a written on a bit of paper yeah. um, that we had, like a physical copy that we had so we knew what the plan was. And now yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot we can talk about with the birth yeah, plan. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Anything from like um, uh, be be flexible on it. Like things can change. Things while you're can there. change. Yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can feel like it's it's going a certain way. Yeah. You you can feel like it's going to go a certain way, and then it goes completely different. Like especially yeah. if you've never had a kid before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how are you to know what to expect? There's a really great book by I think Catherine Bell. I think her name is. It's okay. called The Birth Map. Yeah. And it's about the way birth can go play out, if that makes sense. So, again, it's something that we chat about where it's like if you say yes to, let's say, an induction, it's going to be a different plan or... What's an induction? It's like a medically... Yeah, yeah, getting induced. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess... What are they? Do you know what they do? Yeah, yeah, they do. There's a whole process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I can do maybe a basic summary. Yeah, sure. (laughs) So, usually they put like a... I mean, they assess you, I think. Yeah. It's like a bishop score, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, They assess you and then they put a balloon in usually overnight. And then sometimes that balloon, balloon. will help. Yeah, not like... f- not from like Sparties, not from Spotlight. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know. <laughs> like Special a type of balloon. balloon. Yeah, medical balloon. It, or... I think just air. Oh, yeah. It's okay, just yeah. Air, I think. Cool. And so it stretches your cervix to open okay. it a bit, but you have to be slightly open to have that, I think. Okay. Yeah. And then what Wonderful. they do, so the next day you come in whenever your appointment's booked. And they usually break your waters. And this is what I hate because they break your waters. They said something breaking your back. They just yeah. go bang. <laughs> <laughs> but they do. I've heard someone. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. Fuck me, really? It just, no, it just break, breaks the thing. But So what can happen is once your, you know, your, the amniotic fluid is broken, your baby can be in a really shit position at that point. Sorry, that's a bad yeah. thing. Uh, the wrong, like a, not an out. ideal position. You're to, you're not, a, a, not an option. <laughs> Not an optimal position, I guess. Yeah. And then baby's stuck in that position. Whereas if you hadn't popped the waters and let them just break when they were ready to break, yeah. as nature intended them to break, um, they would baby can move into a better position by that stage and then you might have a smoother birth. But then, so yeah, what they do, your waters break. Even if you give it a bit of time, even if you give it a couple hours and you have your natural construction starting, you're still on their clock in the hospital. So they want to up it with, you know, oxyt- uh, sorry, the pitocin. Yep. The fake oxytocin yeah, okay. to get contractions coming or get contractions closer together so that you can fit into that window of time. Yep. And if you don't, you become either failure to progress or, and then end up in a cesarean, cesarean. or, yeah, it's just, mm-hmm. I mean, again, medically, sometimes they're needed and yep. they're there, but they're overused and they're just, they're, a lot of the time they're not getting needed. <laughs> yeah, okay. Very interesting. So yep. the birthing plan, you were saying Christian yep. Bell's book? Yeah, it's like a birth map. So yeah, okay. it's just that different ways. So, like, again, yeah. some clients that I go with, we do, like, one for everything. We do one for a physiological birth that they want. We do one for an induction if they were to go over yeah. a certain amount of weeks that they weren't comfortable with. Yeah. And we go over, like, a cesarean kind of plan. <laughs> Welcome back. Hey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's down. He is down. Yeah. The first try was a fail. Oh, yeah. 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 We were just talking about the birthing plan. In general or our birthing yeah. plan? Yeah. No, um, in general. Yeah. yeah. In general. Have yeah. a seat. Have a seat. <laughs> yeah. Are you good? Do you need to go to the bathroom or anything no, like that? You're okay. No, okay, cool. Good. Perfect. Yeah. Do you need some water? Do you need some crackers? No, I'm good. You're good? good? Yeah. You yeah. feeling good? Yeah, I'm good. Nervous. That's good. That's great. <laughs> so we're talking about the birthing plan and you were just yeah. talking about Kristen Bell's book okay. and she has a roadmap. Kristen Bell? Yeah. Like as in... No. Kristen Bell. Catherine. Catherine? Catherine Bell. Catherine Bell. Is it Catherine Bell? I think it's Catherine Bell. The actress. I think it's Catherine Bell. I think it's Catherine Bell. As in the actress. No, that's Kristen Bell. Okay. I think you're saying, you're saying, you're saying the wrong name. Actress. I'm a fool. We're on the right. Anyway, path. there's a woman and she wrote a book, and in the book it was the birth map. So it just has different ways that birth can go. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll pro- we're probably we're probably gonna wrap up soon. <laughs> so do you want to say goodbye? Thanks for having me. She said with a mouthful of gelatin. <laughs> Remember. 
remember the last episode when we were talking about how I'm not a bogan? Yeah. Actually, I'll just come back. Mm. Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> That's very ironic because she's definitely a bogan. You didn't have Lake's entrance for a year, didn't you? Yeah. I love like Sanchez. Yeah. It's lovely, but it's a regional town. <laughs> she shits all over Bogan. Yeah. She's a Bogan. She's, she's a Bogan. Anyway. She's a classy Bogan. Yeah, for sure. If anything. For sure. Anyway, yeah. the book, yeah. the birthday. Yeah, yeah. 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 So no, it's a good one. I think it's a good place to start if yeah. you're a first timer. Yeah. Yeah, read it. It's it's just it's short and sweet. It's yeah. not, you know, crazy. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, what might come up on this path? Yeah. There's some awesome podcasts. There's a lot to it. There's so many good things. Can you out recommend here. any? If you're like, if you're like, fuck, we're like I two like... weeks pregnant. Holy shit! Now what? Oh, get onto the birth, uh, the, the Great Birth Rebellion. Yep. Oh, what's that one I really like? Can't remember. I'm just gonna edit it. This. <laughs> Can't remember the name. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's in my notes somewhere. <laughs> yeah, pull it up. Yeah. Pull it up. Um, while you're doing that. Yeah. I'll talk about some of the things that we had in our birth plan. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah. like literally like so we had it on a bit of paper and we decided we were gonna put it on the door. Yeah. Have you got it? No, no, yeah. We decided we were going to put it on the door <laughs> so that it was, like, part. the rules of engagement. You know what I mean? Like, you walk in, like, this is our plan. Like, don't even yeah. fucking bother talking to us about anything else. Yeah. Um, I can't do two things at once. <laughs> no, you're good. I can't concentrate. I'll talk to this camera. You talk to the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't no, you're all good. Um, um, so, it was, like, no epidural. It was uh, no putting the fingers into the vagina. Yeah. No putting... No vaginal exams. Yeah, yeah. No putting screws in my son's head to check his heart rate. Um, stuff like that. The midwife's cauldron. Okay. <laughs> cool. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I know it has midwives in it, but there's going to be so many. Yeah. But, yeah, the Great Birth Rebellion is my go-to. If yeah, I cool. get a chance for a podcast, it's either Andy's podcast that I've been listening to lately, <laughs> or I've been listening, yeah, or I listen to the Great Birth Rebellion. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That's cool. There's so many on there, though, but there's some really good ones. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um... I can't remember what you're saying. Oh, I can't remember what I'm saying either. I know, I know, sort of roughly what I'm saying. I was about to make a point. I can't remember now. Can't have been that important. My dad always used to say, "If you forgot, can't be that important." Why? Um, uh, no, that's right. That's what I was going to say. So the reason we felt it was really important to put the birth plan on the door is because when you're in that yeah. environment, you're vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's yeah. a lot going on. Yeah. You're in uncharted waters. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the, I, I, I did my first ever open mic set last night. And if you asked me any question, I just said, yeah, whatever. Like I was stressed. How do we find this by the way? How do we find it? It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. What's it, what, what are we typing in? It's, uh, it's <laughs> literally on this same YouTube. You'll be able to find it very easy. Yeah, yeah. It's like my <laughs> first set. Anyway, the, the point of me bringing that up was, uh, you, when you're stressed, you're vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. Like, remember when you got your driver's license? How yeah. stressed you were? That was a yeah. hard day. And that was the worst you'd ever driven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Oh, I forgot to turn my indicate. Yeah. That's a very simple part of it, isn't it? Yeah, because you're stressed. Yeah. yeah? And you're not yeah. making good decisions yeah. Yeah. as a result. So when you're in that hyper-stressed thing, a really good idea is to have the rules on the door so they don't even ask you. They don't ask you, yeah. yeah. And they know, yeah, you've laid out some kind of plan or some kind of boundary to begin with. And yeah. they kind of, they do respect it really well, so. Oh, our guys were really good apart from Jilly. Our guys were really, really good. Um, Shout out to Maddie. Yeah. She was listening. And there was another girl as well. Blonde girl? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, Maddie and the blonde girl. <laughs> uh, but they were both really, really good. And they were like on the team. You know yeah. what I mean? That was cool. That was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and you do get some like We're good amazing advice out there. You get some good experiences in hospital like that. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like those yeah. guys were like, they were excited to see a water birth yeah. as well. They were like, we don't yeah. get many of these. Although yeah. they had two on that night because the fucking bathtubs were full. <laughs> um, but yeah. uh, they were excited. They were yeah. on the team. They were yeah. great. They didn't ask us like, do you want this? Do you want this? No. Do you want that? They were on the team. And they were about it. Yeah. And it was awesome. Yeah, you can even see them shed some tears sometimes. And like yeah. Feeling, For yeah, sure. feeling, I mean, like I said, when a natural birth happens or a physical mm-hmm. birth, you can feel it. Absolutely. You know, you can feel that yep. oxytocin everywhere. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Say something, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> no, you're all good. <laughs> Have you got anything else you want to add? Oh, there's plenty to add, but I think yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another day, another story, but no, it was really good. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, well, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> We're at the end now, which is exciting. You made it. How do yeah. you feel? Was it fun? It's Nicole's first podcast. Yeah, it's my first. Was it enjoyable? Was it, was it stressful? Enjoyable. Yeah. Well, I mean, I like you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. easy because Mon and you. Yeah. 
and baby. Yes, sir, what yeah. is yeah. Big, big sir. sir. <laughs> big sir. So in the hospital, yeah. like literally when he was born, yeah. I looked at him and I was like, we're going to call him Big Sir. I don't know yeah. where it came from. I had It was not preconceived. Yeah, yeah. I just looked at him. He was so <laughs> little and yet <laughs> oh. so wise. Yes, and, you did have that, that soul that just looked right in. Yeah. I, I don't like... It was like my spirit selected the name. The only time that's ever happened, the second time, the first time that happened yeah. was when I was 15, I bought my first car. Yeah. Like we were rocked up on this farm and I saw the car and I was like straight away, I knew I was going to buy it. <laughs> I looked at it and I was like, not only am I going to buy that car, yeah. that's Bruce. And it's like an old, it's that yeah. truck out there, the 89 Harley. Well. That's Bruce. Yeah, it's well. Bruce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I had was like, yeah. Big sir. I had a name. Me and my partner had a name for um, our son. It wasn't as cool as yours. It was Fruit. Fruit? What's Fruit? <laughs> I don't know. It's like, like, okay, I, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when he was yeah. in the movie, it was Fruit. And then he was, he was Fruit. Fruit. For three days. My, my yeah, yeah, girlfriend used to say that. Yeah. Uh, what was yeah. it all? It's off something back, back in the day. day. I, I think so. I she used to say what? Fruits or something. <laughs> fruits. The fruits. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um... Yeah. No, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was my pleasure. Uh, I got a lot out of it. I hope you guys got a lot out of it as well. Um, if anyone wants to, so you're in the you're in the Casey Frankston Peninsula Berwick yeah. area. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. will you go? I kind of go. I, I like, like to stick on this side yep. of town these days. Yep. But I mean, definitely contact me. Yeah, okay. I'm free. And I'm how can we get in touch go. with you? Uh, my website. Yep. Usually is the best. Point. And what's your website? It's from maiden to mother. Okay. dot com dot au. Yeah, cool. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, it has kind of my yeah. socials yeah, and I'm cool. very active. Yeah. Them, but, um, word of mouth is usually. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll put that in the comments down below yeah. if you want to click on that. If you want to get in touch with Nicole, definitely recommend. And not just blowing smoke up your ass. Like genuinely, I think it's worth it, and I think Nicole's worth it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's been fun. Have you got anything you want to plug? Not really. Oh I'm like, you don't do a podcast or anything like that? No, no, no. no. I just, do yeah. No. Cool. I might have to now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get my confidence up. That's awesome. Well, you're welcome back anytime. Yeah. I had fun and I got yeah, a lot yeah. out of this. You're like our first real guest. Well, I suppose Josh was our first <laughs> real guest. Yeah, Josh is. I don't know. He's just some sort of real estate agent, alcoholic bimbo. Mine is he's, my favorite, <laughs> he's my favorite idiot. <laughs> Uh, but no, that's it. Thank you so much. As always, this episode, like every episode, is sponsored by Smart Yards. If you want your garden to look wonderful with cut grass and cut hedges, uh, please go to smartyards.com.au. Um, two, three, four, twenty-nine. Um, and I will cut your grass wonderfully. Uh, I will be performing... So last night I did my first ever open mic set. I will be back at Comedy in the Cellar in St Kilda to do another open mic set, my second open mic set, and hopefully this time I don't forget my first joke. <laughs> uh, I'll have a brand new five minutes. Uh, I, uh, I'm i killing my babies, so to speak, which is a f- like that's, so that's a comedy term. <laughs> killing your babies mean? means like I've now put my material on the internet. It's yeah. done. I'm yeah. starting fresh yeah, when yeah, killing yeah. my babies, which yeah. usually is fine to say, but yeah. probably not no, after the interview yeah. we've done. <laughs> done so I'm starting brand new with a brand new five minutes. Yeah. In, uh, on the 29th of September, if you want to come and see me, I will be working out a new five minutes. So it's not polished material. It is brand new stuff. Uh, it's, um, yeah, so it's not professional. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be shitting that like I was last night. But yeah. um, no, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please like subscribe, share, comment down yeah. below. Um, and think another one to get out your comfort zones. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do That's a good love. one, actually. Do what yeah. You're yeah. About. yeah, I sat on this for 10 years. I've wanted to do this since I was 16. Yeah. I turned 26 next month and I went, I need to do this. So yeah. I finally did it. So. That's it. Go out Daddy. there. Go out there and get it. Do whatever you want. If you want to be a unicorn, go and be a unicorn. Maybe don't. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been episode. Uh, this is episode five. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Touch it. Peace. <laughs>